Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to uh, Waikiki Beach. Today we're looking out over uh, beautiful waves and uh, some uh, a, a man and his family who uh, who love our, our ministry is it happened to be here in town. So when we're done with the radio show, we're going to go down and teach his family how to surf. So it's going to be pretty cool. So we'd like to welcome Kevin, Kevin and his and his Ohana. And we have a great uh, great show today. We have a Catholic biker priest from St. Cloud, Minnesota, Father Scott Pogachnik, and uh, we'll be right back to dig into his story. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We have a real cool show uh, today. We have Father Scott Pogachnik with us. He's a biker priest. He's um, in St. Cloud, Minnesota, which is a real special place for me. Uh, my mom was from the South Dakota, Minnesota area. My dad was from the Dakotas. And after I was raised in California, they moved back for a while to Minnesota before they ended up living in Hawaii in the islands. And uh, but near the time of my mother's death, um, she ended up being on a vacation up in Minnesota, and that just things began to deteriorate for her. So he, so she ended up in a St. Cloud hospital. And I remember I got the call. I, I grabbed about a, a dozen uh, beautiful flower lays, great fragrant lays, and jumped on an airplane and flew to St. Cloud. My whole family was there, and my mother. She was such a courageously happy woman. Uh, she had actually had a stroke about 20 years before that. Uh, during a real heroic surgery that only about eight people had had before her to spare her life, but she ended up having her speech center kind of messed up, so she couldn't she couldn't really communicate. And I just remember um, about six months before that occurred, the Lord really impressed on her to write a letter to all of her grandchildren. It's a, in fact, it's part of uh, the book that we have of my father's to climb the highest mountain. My father is a Catholic deacon, which we have available on our website. And it's just it's just a letter to young people, you know, how to live their lives. So she was a very wise woman, and it's just so interesting how the Lord said, like, get this down, because He knew what was coming for her, what was going to happen. But she was courageously joyful and happy, and understood and fully alive, and communic and just couldn't. She could listen to everything. She just couldn't talk, <laughs> couldn't talk very well. She would just always smile and say, "Wonderful, wonderful." That was that was the word she could say. And, um, and so when we got to, I got to the hospital, my mother had been in a coma for about um, 10, 10 days, and she'd gone through some pretty uh, drastic uh, means to save her life by that time, and we knew it was time for her to go. And uh, I, I got there in, in the afternoon, and then in, in the following the morning in the dark, I'd gone into her room, and I, and I had all the lays just spread across her bed. She loved the Hawaiian, Hawaiian lays. And uh, I opened up the curtains. And my mother and father had a, a home on the North Shore uh, in, in Minnesota back in the day. My dad uh, gave uh, retreats to presidents of, of companies. And so their home was almost like a retreat house, and they called it Eagle's Rest. And their favorite uh, song was Eagle's Wings. When my dad was ordained, that was the song my dad played for my mother because she was wind beneath his wings. And, of course, the scripture verse, uh, you know, uh, those that wait upon the Lord shall, well, shall renew their strength like an eagle. They shall mount up and not be weary they shall run and not faint and so when I opened up the windows and the curtains the sun was just about to start rising on a snowy day in the spring and all of a sudden a bald eagle just flew right immediately flew to the window and did a figure eight within about 10 feet of, this, of my mom's window and uh, my family had all just arrived and it did it did the figure eight twice and then flew away and immediately my mother's breath began to change and within a about two and a half minutes then she left us but this is what's so cool is when that time came because she hadn't been able to speak and she had been in a coma but in that last moment her last few breaths she just said oh 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 and she you know was seeing the beatific vision and uh, all of her people my sister came in and said one of these days we're going to find out why all this suffering but we understand as Catholics, we know the redemptive, the redemptive power uh, in prayer. And I just know my mother's suffering has... And the interesting thing is, within a 
within days and weeks after that, my Catholic ministry just exploded. So, uh, so I'm just so glad to have a special moment with Father Scott, who's a priest there in St. Cloud. So, uh, and also a, bro- a father, after, a priest after my own heart because uh, I have his biker. Uh, he loves motorcycles. Father Scott, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Yeah, great to join you, Bear. What a moving story. Gosh, bless your mom. She's got to be so proud of just everything you are, everything you've become. I mean, we're all like products of our mothers in so many ways, too. You know, dad and mom pouring your life out. So um, thanks for sharing that. What a what a, what a marvelous Isn't it cool? uh, providence. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And just know that they're praying. My father passed away about a year and a half ago. And just knowing, I mean, I just know that there are times when I just know doors are opening because of their prayers so it's just it's just been really interesting to see but so st cloud has that special place in my heart and the mississippi is it the mississippi river that goes right along st cloud i remember it was frozen over at that time but were you a were you a minnesota boy or where were you raised yeah born and raised so on a lake you know everyone's maybe born on a lake in minnesota we got (laughs) fifteen thousand of them here yeah and uh so yeah born and raised so actually born in the same hospital your mother passed away in so wow how interesting born right there Mm-hmm. Yep, and grew up about 20 minutes west of there. Like I said, small town on the lake. Um, you know, very Catholic. What what few people out there probably uh, few people know is the fact that Stearns County, which uh, St. Cloud's the seat of Stearns County, uh, had the highest percentage of Catholics in the whole country probably about 25, 30 years ago. It's like 96 percent Catholic, and so you grow up and everyone, even if you go to the public school, everybody's Catholic. All the teachers are Catholic. You know, so it's very uh, culturally uh, imbued in the roots and the soil a lot of farmers uh you know just that that kind of saturated uh the countryside we have so many towns frankly that are named after saints we have a a bike tour saint, called the saint tour of cloud, the saints saint cloud for example who is saint cloud that's claude isn't it who i forget the saint cloud legacy who is that well people yeah originally when they sent the name over they 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 sent the paperwork back from the vatican saying saint claude but they're like no 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 not saint Claude is a German saint. Saint Cloud, Clodald, was the grandson of King Clovis, who was the first king, Catholic king of the Franks. So he's really the one that made France Catholic. Yes. And so Saint Cloud is a grandson who was heir to the throne. He was the prince. And when he was 20 years old, he'd been growing his hair as princes were made to do to take over the throne. He go, but goes before the bishop and the king and cuts his hair and says, I give over the throne for a higher throne. And it goes off into the woods to be a hermit. Everyone goes to him to, for prayers and healings. They eventually call upon him to be ordained a priest. Uh, and he really he, he dies at the age of 38, really from consumption, from the fact that he had such severe penances and fasting and all these kind of things. But uh, you can still go see his church. It's on the west banks of the Seine in Paris. Oh, it is, uh, really? And, Oh, cool. Yep, yep. Right. And really the reason St. Cloud got its name, St. Cloud, Minnesota, is because we sit upon the west bank of the Mississippi, just as saint Cloud, oh. France, sits on the west bank of the Seine. Is that so, near Notre, Notre Dame is on the west side too, isn't it? Is yeah. it over on that side? Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, it would be west of there. But Even yeah, more west, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's right. Mm-hmm. How yeah, cool. So. so I've often wondered about that, you know, so that that's so that's so cool. So but you were raised. Uh, were you raised uh, in the town or were you out on a, a farm or where were you? Where, were, where did you live? Yeah. So in a town, I guess you call it a town, about 1500 people right on an interstate. So we had a lot of commerce that would go through. Uh, but then on a chain of lakes, so we had three lakes we could bounce in between, um, you know, schools about 10 minutes away. But yeah, I mean, really, my mom was one of 13 kids. My dad was one of five. I had 60 first cousins. Well, um, so, yeah. So you were surrounded by, by um, just the Catholic culture. You know, I, w- I was in Napa and uh, several years ago, and someone asked Archbishop Chaput what is his what, what evangelism program would he recommend, what's, what's a good program out there? And he said, get married, have lots of children, raise them up in the Lord, which is really what that was all about, right? Amen. Now, yeah. have you, now, yeah, have you my ever grandparents. Heard, mm-hmm. yeah. Have you ever heard of this thing called hockey? Oh, boy. Sure thing. Sure Is it, thing. Did you guys play yeah. that out on the lakes? Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> That's all the time. Cold. That's Growing cold. up. Yeah, I got stitches right across the bridge of my nose from a hockey stick right there. So, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and what was the result of that? Did the other guy end up looking worse than you by that time that was yeah, over? Yeah, well... <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I scored on the play. You know, I scored on the play, so that's, that's, all, that's all that counts. That's the sweet revenge right there. 
Hockey yeah, is right. amazing. I've only played it once in my life, but I just remember they gave me these this stick to hang on to so I wouldn't fall down. You know, it kind of helps you balance. So it's like cheating. Oh, yeah. But it's like football on skates because it's a full contact. Uh, and being blindsided and all that, there's like no hope. So. Oh, absolutely. And we had huge snow banks. So if you check a guy, right, you weren't checking him <laughs> into the boards, but, you know, you'd give him a good one into the snow bank and put him in the dust, you know. So yeah, you uh, yeah, dig, dig, sure. him out in the, dig him out in the spring, right? Just his skates are yeah. sticky. Yeah, that's exactly right. Exactly right. And we, we do have one ice skating rink in Hawaii. Wow. <laughs> I've never been there, but, we, but and we do have snow. Uh, we had 105 degree winds on Mount I believe I'm on Kea this winter, this last winter, with blizzard conditions, so it can get cold. We're talking with Father Scott P- P- Pogotchnik. Uh, you got it. And uh, he's got probably like a distant cousin of mine, and uh, and he's a, he's a, a pastor, priest in the St. Cloud area. And we come back, we're going to talk, dig a little bit more into uh, his story and a little bit more about his motorcycle, his love for motorcycles. This is the Bear Wastnik Adventure. We want to invite you to go to deepadventure.com and we have Bear School of Manliness. It's a great place for you to meet other like-minded men. You know, we're all like bozos on the same bus, but we're there to help each other. And it's also a great place for you to take your sons and go through our three-year curriculum with them on, on the 36 different rules for manliness. So we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wastnik Adventure. This is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up, Spittin' and Whittlin'. A lad back in the 1950s, I would sit with my kin working their rocking chairs on the back porch of the old Markham home. It was a two-story affair having a large dining room where the grandfather clock chimed in dinner and other affairs. It was built back in the 1870s after my great uncles, grandpappy and great grandpappy came across the Oregon Trail to strike it rich in the booming and sometimes bust salmon fishing industry. The old place was blown off its foundation during the Columbus Day storm of 1962. Hooey, that was one serious southwester with gusts of over 100 miles per hour and sustained winds of 80 to 90 miles per hour. Well, I digress, but digressing is a fine place to go now and then. Anywho, great Uncle Hiram and Joseph would sit on the back porch of the old place spitting and whittling tobacco juice, that is, telling their stories after Sunday church dinner. And that's when most of the spitting and whittling was done. It was a for sure event to happen every week. Having a good stick or a piece of driftwood and carving knife was required. Time passed as stories got told. Jesus was a master storyteller. What them parables are all about, spiritual truth wrapped in a story. I can picture Jesus with his 12 around a campfire or sitting in the shade of a green tree in Galilee, pointing out to the surrounding fields. Behold, the lilies of the field. Yep, finest stories in the world to be reading. If you haven't picked up the Bible lately, open up to the storybooks of the Bible, like Genesis, Exodus, Esther, and the Gospels and the Book of Acts, some real interest in reading and storytelling at its best. This is Dan Laboon Markham at CountryUp.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Now you can journey with other men in the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue and servant leadership through Bears Man Cave non-Facebook community and our three-year School of Manliness. Video, audio, and written content, as well as self-assessments help you to chart your new course. Join us at deepadventure.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm going to invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com. Click on the store button. People don't see it very easily, but we have all kinds of great stuff 
stuff there, but including uh, my uh, my two most recent books that Sophia ha- has just published, and uh, my dad's book actually, "To Climb the Highest Mountain." My father was a Catholic deacon, and 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 it's interesting. We're with Father Scott Pach- Pogachnik from the St. Cloud area. It's interesting because uh, when I was in I was in Fort Wayne, Indiana last week, I was re- uh, uh, recording these OSV talks that they do, and while I was there, I just had this scripture verse of. I was thinking about um, when the mantle of Elijah fell on Elisha, you know, and he had received a double portion. And I kind of was thinking, um, that's kind of like with my father. He, had a, he, had a, he was a public speaker. Um, he worked a lot with presidents of companies, but mostly men. And just kind of, and he was a great homilist. And so in some ways, it's kind of interesting to see that anointing kind of be passed down. But here you are, um, parish priest in St. Cloud. But tell us a little bit more now. You played uh, football in high school or... Did you do everything? You said your yeah, football you coach it, yeah. had a big impact on you. For sure, for sure, yeah. So football, basketball, uh, track, and golf. I played a little baseball as a kid, just you know, trying to make contact on a regular basis is more challenging. But uh, but for sure, football. I guess in the school I grew up on, football was king. I mean, we had state championships, and you know, from the time you're a fourth grader, it's like you want to go and you want to win the title. I remember being a fifth grader, sitting in the classroom. And we had just won the state title, and all these giant seniors come walking through the yeah, room. Yeah, with, with their, their Letterman jackets. First, oh, yeah. Right? They, just, they just won the state title, 300 pounds, 320 pounds, you know, the quarterback, all that. So Minnesota you know, farm kid, boys, right? They grow them big, corn, yeah. Corn-fed. <laughs> corn corn-fed, wow. Yeah. Throwing bales of hay will get you, uh, get you, like, not just strong, but functionally strong, you know, like oh, la- yeah. lateral. Strength. Yeah, yeah core strength and everything yeah. else what did what did you play in football what what was your your position yes yeah, so running back defensive back i played more defense yeah defensive back and uh just camaraderie amongst the men was so huge and our coaches i guess i just give so much credit to them they were men of integrity uh, men of their word men who prayed uh, we'd see them at mass again i went to a public school but maybe just to kind of give a credit to to them um, really, I mean, we prayed before every game. I'm not sure if you'd be able to do that anymore, but in the locker room, right before, you know, everyone's frothing at the mouth and ready to go out, and, you know, kick the tar out of, you know, the, the rival the next door school, um, we'd pray. And it was amazing. We went from like, you know, just all this cheering to like everyone's on a knee and head coach is leading us all in prayer. That's and, so uh, cool. Before the game and just, after? Or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I yep. remember be, in, in California, I, was, I played for a, a new school. And we were all surfers. We didn't know what we were doing, you know. <laughs> when the surf was up, not a lot of us went to practice. But, but then I went to Texas my senior year. And, oh, that coach, and he was Catholic too, but he, he, he was, it was a public school. But, oh, my gosh, that coach, he could get you fired up, you know. And I remember, and we would pray, uh, and then he'd say, let's go. And I remember we went burst out this one door. We broke it open. It, we didn't. It was supposed to be open. It was designed to be opened inward, and we busted that mm-hmm. door down. So, <laughs> I, so I know, man. And I was like you know, as a running back, linebacker type. But I, did you like running or or sticking people more? What did you like the most? Yeah, tackling. There's nothing better, right? <laughs> it's than true. Coming up on a, you, yeah. on a pitch and just laying somebody out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's better sure, than okay. You score the winning touchdown, but boy, man, I laid that guy out. It's so much more fun. Oh uh, yeah. Well, then what, what, when did you begin to feel a sense of vocation in your life? Was it just after you stuck I mean, honestly, somebody? or <laughs> To be honest with you, it wasn't until college, you know. So I, I graduated high school, go up to a little school called North Dakota State. Uh, it's known for its football team Yeah, now. North mean, Dakota State, yeah. Number one in the country a year after a year. Yeah, yeah. They're after, you know, that lower class. Grand Forks, I think, right? Job. So, yeah. uh, in Fargo, yeah. But Fargo, the, yeah, um, okay. And so went up there for an engineering degree and so uh, just ran into like amazing folks up there, you know, great guys. The Newman Center was hopping up there. Not every Newman Center, right, it does fantastic work. But this this place was um, just on fire. Focus Missionaries came about the year I left, but um, really, just very. Really? Yeah. Wow. OK, yeah. so. So that's wow. they've been there for they've been there for almost 20 years. That's I mean, so it's what a great truly, ministry. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, that, that, that university, the, the student body, a lot of like Minnesota, North and South Dakota kids, uh, but truly like my junior, senior year of college, one of my buddies who had been, you know, went to a Catholic school and just started talking about, you know, like a vocation, something every man needs to think about. And mm-hmm. I looked up to him a lot. I mean, he was just, uh, he was a big guy in campus. Uh, he had a lot of gifts. He was just kind of a charismatic figure. And when he started talking about the priest, I'm like, really, man? Like, 
is that, is that something you're really going to take seriously? And he said, yeah. He's like, every man's got to do it. And so I was like, wow. Go through the you know, discernment. Been, to go through the discernment absolutely. process. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so he's like, you know, and he's like, you know, because, you know, he had dated, I had dated. We'd kind of like, you know, I'd, had um, really pursuing kind of um, no more of a married vocation. But when he's like, okay. He's like, because it was transition period. We were thinking about graduating college. Where are we going to work? What are we going to do? All those big questions came up. And, and honestly, Bear, the, the fall of our senior year was uh, when 9-11 took place. Mm. And, uh, you know, that's an event that shook the whole world, of course. But mm -hmm. uh, just personally, as you're trying to figure out what you're going to do as a young person, um, I was like, wow, what's worth spending your life on? I mean, what's right. worth giving your life for? You know, if it, your life could be taken in a moment like that, it's like, well, what, what are we here for? And those questions just kind of bounced around in my head. Uh, I ended up graduating, taking a backpack and going to Europe for three months. Where did you just go? Because I was trying to figure out. Oh, you know, I don't know, 17 countries. I mean, I went over the all, I mean, flew into Stockholm, Sweden on a flyby or a, a, a standby flight. And uh, went from all the way from Stockholm all the way down to Morocco and in between. So, oh, you're kidding. Um, so you went down, you took yeah. the ferry across from, to Lubeck or something or Germany and then worked your way all the way down to, I see, I've never been to Morocco. That's such a great history down there, isn't it? Of, of brave, the, 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 the battle against the, uh, the, um, uh, you know the the Muslim invasion. I forget what they were called then, but but you know that whole yeah. Spain and France is just. I've never been to Morocco. There's good surf there in Morocco. Oh man, yeah, <laughs> I, I've never done that. I've yeah. never done that. But I, you go to like you know Fez and and, and Casablanca. And yeah, Marrakech. yeah, yes, all those places. Did you do and, more and of North really Africa, or did you? Or was that to your extent of Africa? Yeah, just yeah, pretty much just that for North Africa. I've been to Egypt, you know, but um, but yeah, but, during that trip, I was just searching. Yeah, I was just got a backpack on my back, and I'm, yeah. You know, you know, what's interesting is when you travel like that, it's like there's a Catholic church I'm going to go to Mass, and it's like going to McDonald's, dude. It's the same thing <laughs> everywhere, which is a, is so yes. cool. I mean, it's like you may not even understand the language that it's being said in, but you know exactly where it is. You can almost pick up a sense of what gospel they're reading and stuff, and it's so cool to be part of the, the, the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Yeah. And, so, and I was the poor, I was a poor college student. You know, I just graduated, you know, so I didn't have a lot of money. I would sit in the back of these giant cathedrals and just, just marvel because I was an engineering student, right? I was oh just marveling God. at like, how would you put this thing together? Like who made this thing? And just like, you know, what man does when he's trying to honor God with everything, you'd sit in those cathedrals and you're like, you're just stunned. I mean, these are a thousand years old, 500 years old. And you're like, what is worth giving your life for? What's worth And it was the whole for? town gave its life for those cathedrals. They would, they, and it would be a hundred year project, you know? Yes. Isn't it yes. interesting? Take, you look outside, okay, there's a field. That's a, that's a nice field and there's air there. And you don't think anything of it. But then the cathedral comes up and when you walk in, it's like it got bigger. Like the space mm. seems bigger, right? That's G, there was a G.K. Chesterton who said the Catholic Church is the only thing that's bigger on the inside than it looks like from the outside. And, and, and physically too, isn't it true? Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah. I mean, just so I mean, sitting in the back of there was like a huge part of even my story. Like I was, I was thinking about, about vocation. My buddy who's like, hey, I'm going to the seminary. I'm like, you're going to what? You know, and I'm just saying, like, I, I got to figure life out. I got to, you know, just say what, you know, what am I what's my life for? And just asking Jesus those questions in the back of those cathedrals was a huge step in my own discernment. Early and, on, uh, early on in my life, when I went through a process, I, I I went to Notre Dame and went to confession when I had been stayed with the mm -hmm. Lord, but I dr I drifted from the Catholic Church. But when you're in there and you see the arches, okay, that's hard enough. But then when you see a dome and you wonder how did they do that? Did you, as an engineer, ever figure that out? <laughs> oh gosh, I mean, when you when you when you study the flying buttress and just the marvel of engineering creation, like to make these walls of glass. And you're like, oh my gosh, like that's all glass. There's, there's no, there's not enough support in that glass to hold this thing up. But they exteriorized all those pillars through bu flying buttresses and they could find a way to just make the, like you said, these divine houses go up to the heavens. I and mean, so, it's just, uh, And so God looked yeah. at you, this, this rough rock, and just said, I'm going to make something beautiful out of you. Um, we're going to take a break here in a moment, but was it during, it was during that trip when you began to ha have that sense more directly for the calling? For sure. Yeah. And it's just ongoing conversion, right? The Lord first breaks us all the way down before he builds us up. So that's pretty much what it was. That trip was helped me see myself as, as, uh, as someone that was in need of a little, 
little purification, but was on the way. Well, you know what the thing is, is the is when you're going to build a big building, you got to dig dig a deep hole, you know. And so the deeper that hole is that you're sometimes the young people are in that like, what are you doing wrong, God? You know, you, just why am I down here in the pits? You know, but if God's going to do a great work, he'll take you into a deep place like that and prepare that that soul foundation for you so that what he builds, uh, it will stand. We're talking with Father Scott Pogachnik, uh, pastor up in the St. Cloud area. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak and I'm coming to you from my home in Waikiki Beach with a deep adventure moment. Now I'm thinking about a friend of mine, I used to know him in Santa Cruz and he's one of the first men that went out and surfed Mavericks. Huge, gnarly, cold wave, 45 foot faces, lip, the lip of the wave is 10 foot thick and it just throws in all kinds of ugly patterns. And he got to the beach, he grabbed his big longboard, his rhino chaser, his uh, his big wave gun, and oh, he realized he didn't bring his wax. He didn't care. He said, I'm going to go out and paddle out anyway. He paddled out at Mavs, dropped in on a huge wave, and as he dropped in, he stood up on his board. Now, the reason why we have wax is it gives us traction on the board. We, it's that paraffin-type wax, special kind of wax, and it gives us a grip on the board. He stood up on the board on one of the gnarliest waves you can ride, and he started sliding down the face of the board and then he did something worse he started skipping across the surface of the water when you wipe out on a big wave you want to drill a hole in that wave and go as deep as you can but he skipped across the face and had a great a big wipeout. and here's the thing are you waxing up your surfboard another way to say it are you keeping uh, are you keeping the fire hot another way to say it is are you sharpening your sword are you sharpening your blade as men, we need to be pre prepared for the battle. You need to keep your, your iron in the fire. You need to keep your blade sharp. You need to wax your surfboard and be ready because God is calling you to drop into big waves. In fact, if you don't realize it, you're already out in huge surf. So spend your time in prayer, receiving the sacraments, reading scriptures, praying your rosary, the greatest, most powerful way uh, I know uh, to pray an intercessory prayer other than the Eucharist. This is Bear Wozniak with a deep adventure moment. Keep your surfboards waxed. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, a Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak deepadventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to let, let everybody know that Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak is airing on EWTN on Tuesday evenings, but also uh, we're up on Prime Video. So you can watch all of our episodes there. And uh, uh, also, uh, if you want to, if you go to deepadventure.com and become a member, then you get all of our access to all of our, our uh, shows uh, via YouTube, a, a secret YouTube links. And then when we do a director's cut before EW10 even airs it, you get that. So right now we have four new episodes ready uh, of our Hawaii shoot, which we won't deliver the network for even a few months. So you can go, go to deepadventure.com and become part of our Ohana. We're talking with Father Scott Pogachnik. Uh, pastor in the St. Cloud area, biker priest. We got to talk about your biker situation here at some point. But so, what was it then? On um, you took you took a pilgrimage, really. And it, were you with someone when you were traveling, or off and on? You were with other people, or were you pretty much soloing it? The first month with a good friend, you know. So the two of us were over there for the first month. They headed back after that, but 
But following that, those two months was, yeah, just kind of solo. And right, you always match up with companions on a journey. You know, you look for folks who are mm-hmm. going the same direction and mm-hmm. you hear their story, you tell your story. And there's something about every time you tell your story, something else is revealed. You know, like another mm. layer is revealed. Mm. It's powerful to do that. If, you know, you're surrounded by beauty or history. You're learning about, you know, who are the great people that built up this city or, or in this era of history, you know, what were they made of? And then you start telling your own story and hearing a story. Uh, such dynamism in that, that the Lord uses for your own discernment and vocation. Uh, and what happened? Yeah, so those visits. So what happened? Yeah, well, those yeah, visits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, honestly, it's like those visits. Uh, I mean, you mentioned kind of going to confession. I went to confession at Fatima to some um, exorcist priest. I had no idea it was an exorcist until wow. I left with the card he gave me. So I was like, the Lord did amazing work there. Uh, confession, honestly, I, I had heard in uh, St. Mary Major in Rome, a uh, priest there just kind of like just brought me so much freedom. You know, I, there was something about once you almost feel an expectation to think, okay, Lord, maybe you're calling me to do this. And I don't know if I want to do it. It can feel like such a burden. And more or less, he told me, he's like, you know, Scott, like if God wants you to be a priest, he'll make you a priest. Trust me. If you pray, you do all the things you need to do. I was kind of worried about messing it up. You know, I was kind of worried about, oh, gosh, if I'm not holy enough, if I don't do this, right, you know, so all that expectation was washed away. And there was such a freedom that was produced there that, uh, yeah, so I go home. And I go uh, go back to work because I got a job. I had to kind of pay off that trip. And then, uh, um, but I was, yeah, I was praying, trying to get my life back in order. And um, again, my parents played a huge role in kind of the next steps. I get back home and, and kind of feel this prompting. And um, yeah, I mean, my folks have always been just uh, heroic. They got married super young. They got us four kids, but they've always been a huge part of our life. And uh, just their humble witness, their faithfulness in marriage. Um, their openness to life, all those things uh, played a big role uh, in that. But uh, So yeah. then did you go back and uh, when did you begin seminary? Yeah, so, so it was two that... years, really. I come, yep, I worked full time for two years. It was really that second year that the Lord got a hold of me even more and did some powerful work. Um, I went down to see that good friend of mine who I talked about in college, went to see him at the seminary, and it was seeing him there, seeing all which, which the... Which seminary was I, it? Uh, that was down at Kendrick Glennon down in St. Louis, Missouri. Oh, okay. So just a powerful, um, that was it powerful then. visit. That was it. Yeah. Well, that that honestly, like, said, wow, these guys are awesome. Like, <laughs> frankly, I was thinking, oh man, like, who becomes a priest? And and honestly, Bear is because I had been surrounded by most priests who were 65, 75, 80 years old, good good men, but grandfatherly figures. And so I never met a priest that was under 50 years old until I went to college. You, you young priests I mean, are so on fire, dude. Father. It's just so cool to be a. You guys really, you're, you're there for all the, you're not there, for, you're there for the gospel. You're there for Jesus. You're there for your flock. And I love talking with uh, young priests. Just love it. Yeah. I know you're not exactly young. Uh, you're not but you're maybe in your 30s or 40s, I don't know. But you're not as old as me. But you guys are just on fire. And you know what, you, what happened to you? Uh, when you were hanging around these guys originally, is that, you know, that c- call to go deeper with God is something that's caught. And then later, usually it's caught first, and then later it's taught. You know, but there was something there with you, this, the, this kindling. You know, you get two or three logs together as a Boy Scout. It takes two or three sticks, you know, to get a fire going. And you get these two or three guys together and hanging out together and all going the same direction. So where did you end yeah. up going to seminary? Yeah, so I did two years of philosophy or uh, yeah, philosophy studies at St. Thomas in St. Paul, Minnesota. Yes, and so that was fantastic. Great school. And then Bishop sent yep, and then Bishop sent a few of us uh, overseas to the North American College. So spent Where the is next that? four Where years. Is, is that in Rome? Uh, in Rome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So just brotherhood, you know, just beautiful brotherhood over there. In fact, this buddy of mine who was down in St. Louis doing his philosophy ended up getting set into Rome too, and so. So like really? We went from NDS, wow. Yeah, we went from NDSU and, you know, he along with a lo- lot of other just like fantastic guys from the Midwest, um, you know, 250 guys from all over the United States and beyond. And the brotherhood you form there is just it's just so big. You're there with the saints. You're there with again. You know, I talked about St. Peter's. I know, and dude. You're like places. You're like, wait a minute. St. Peter's right over St. Paul's. Over. And then, you know, every church you walk by, there's a, some other saint that, that's been buried there. It's. It's being in America. You're so removed from that, and it's just mm-hmm. it's just right there. 
when um, you marvel at the buildings there like you marvel at the, the 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 engineering all that stuff but the building is built because of the person i mean the building right. is built because of that man that woman they gave right. their life for the lord and so that's what i always have to remind people is like yeah like look at the incredible architecture but but realize why it was built and uh and that's something for all of us to keep in mind right i mean we'll have glorious cathedrals built for us too in heaven uh, it's all about giving our life away and, well, you, and how we find ways to do that. You know what? It's like Jesus said, Jesus, they say in the Greek, I think it's technon, a word similar to that. It doesn't say he was a carpenter. It says he was a builder. And we, re, and mm. probably he built in rock, right? Because you go to Israel, there's no wood there. There's only one house made out of wood. <laughs> right. The only house made out of wood there is the prime minister's. But even Mary's house was carved out of a limestone cave, and then those quarried rocks were made to make that house bigger. So Jesus was a builder, but we don't know anything that he built other than his church. You know, and so when you see these great cathedrals, it's, it's, you see this great workmanship inspired by the Lord and by the Holy Spirit. Um, and people get so worried about the Catholic Church, the state of the Catholic Church, the state of the leadership of the church. Or um, Jesus is building his church. We just keep doing the stuff and then leave the rest up to him. Yeah, and there's no doubt it's apostolic times. I know I just, uh, there's a wonderful book from Monsignor Shea up at U- University of Mary in Bismarck about, you know, from Christendom to the apostolic age, and we're very much in that apostolic age again. I mean, it is the age of the apostles to be sent out on fire to go do the Lord's work. And uh, it takes everybody, right? It takes, I think maybe one of that's the, one of the fruits of the Second Vatican Council to say, hey, lay people, your charisms, your gifts, everything you've been given is meant for the building up of the church. And so when we kind of, you know, get all those things in alignment, uh, you know, the church can fly like she's meant to. And uh, and so that's, you know, very much, you know, you talked, we're going to get around to, to, to the, to the bike aspect. Okay, I want to hear um, about it. Let, I was going to bring that yeah, up next. Tell well, us about that. Yeah, well, you talk about, you know, uh, not top of cod. I mean, obviously, my dad and all my uncles, all that kind of stuff. Well, they had bikes when I was a kid, you know, so you always want to jump on the bike. So I'm 16 years old, get my driver's license, and right after that, I go and get my license to drive a motorcycle. And you had to do, like, a special course. If you weren't 18, if you wanted to get it early, you do the special course. So go ahead and do that and, you know, drop jumping on my dad's bike for a while. Um, and then really fast forward in college, I didn't, I biked here and there on some bike runs, uh, did my seminary time, came back. Uh, and that's when it kind of more took off. So, uh, my brother got a Harley, he, then he got a second one. My dad got a, a beautiful soft tail. And so about 10 years ago or so, uh, I'm newly appointed as the vocation director and, uh, just going around to preach at different churches and serve vocations, uh, just latched onto some awesome folks in our diocese who would Go on bike trips. We got. We so got to take a quick join. We got to take a yeah, quick, quick, quick break. I'm really stoked to talk more about the whole motorcycle connection. We're talking about Scott Bogachnik. He's a diocesan uh, pastor, priest in uh, the St. Cloud area. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. We invite our mama bears to join our non-Facebook community created just for you to share the journey with each other, and to take the self-guided one-year course on The Virtues Plus, you have free access to all of the Long Ride Home TV show, all of the Bear Wozniak video version of our radio show, plus the Catechism in a Year videos, all at deepadventure.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're talking with Father Scott Pogachnik. He's a pastor and a priest in the uh, in the St. Cloud area. And I guess he was raised uh, around motorcycles, 
but they became more and more a bigger part. You know, Father, the thing about the motorcycle is it it makes you more approachable in some ways. It's just like mm -hmm. saying, you know, um, it just just you especially for men, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a man's man. We can, you know, talk real. But what what about the the biker culture? You said you began to develop a, a group of friends who you would ride with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, there's a, like you said, you share this kind of this natural bond, right? This love to kind of be in the open road. I mean, we have just beautiful lakes in here. We don't have the big mountains. We don't have the surf that you have out there, but uh, land of 15,000 lakes, uh, beautiful countryside. You know, really we'd, uh, you know, been around Lake Superior. And so it's both like getting away in that pilgrimage aspect, you know, getting you did, away. You did, you did Lake Superior the, all the way the upper peninsula and around? Yeah. And we yeah, did that, we did yeah, that too. Absolutely. We went from, uh, uh, you know, um, Indiana up and around the UP to Wisconsin, then over to Saint to Saint Paul. That's a run. Yeah. Do you know Jeff Cavins? Yeah, you good friends sure, with? Sure, sure. Yeah. I mean, that guy's a biker. And his, do you know that his friend, uh, who's the, the 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 sergeant up in Canada, who's who has the barbecue ministry? I forget his name. Boy, said I don't. Him. Oh, you got to meet these guy, that guy. But so yeah, so wow. tell us about that brotherhood. Yeah, so I just think it right. It's just something where you have this natural. Uh, bond in common, right? And it just, it allows you to, to speak about the natural things of life. Uh, I mean, very much how life is a pilgrimage, life is a journey, because when you go on these trips, you got weather coming at you, you got unexpected things, you got detours, you know, you got things that happen with your bike along the way. And so there's so much about that, the communication that's necessary, uh, the sharing that's necessary, you know, and then you're stopping to grab a bite to eat, right? And grabbing, you know, something at a watering hole and and you find the most unique places to stop at. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like, yeah. oh, you got this place, and you know, if there's a bunch of bikes out. There's a bunch of bikes out there. You know, it's going to be some good grinds, some good food. Oh, but absolutely, yeah, good stories. You know, and yeah. What I like about it too is, um, you know, as a priest, you're coming with your leathers on, but there's something about like, you know, whether someone mentions it, you know, you got your collar on or not. It's just like you, you they find out you're a priest, and they're almost like they're shocked. You know, like they're like you know, watch your language or do this. I was like, hey, fathers, you know, we're all here as men. We're here to kind of like praise the Lord with the gifts he's given us. And it's fascinating the conversations that are stirred up, really. I mean, people mm -hmm. want, they want to talk about something deeper. They don't want to just talk about weather and sports and all these kind of things as much as you can Politics start a conversation or whatever. Yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, they want to they wanna find out what's, you know, what's underneath all of that. And, uh, you know, well, what they, got they, you into it. They ride it. for a reason. I mean, there's that sense of freedom. And it's the sense of brotherhood. Yeah. And there's the endurance. Just, why do we like this? We're, we're going through freezing rain. They got people are driving by us in these very nice, comfortable cars. And we're like, why do we even like this? Because men, men respond to that challenge and the, and, and the brotherhood going through it together. It's, uh, it's, it's, and, and then that makes you more approachable to them, too, when you, when you show up you know, as a priest. Yeah. Well, I would tell you this, too. I mean, there's a reflective aspect when you're like with a group. But you're on your bike by you're yourself, alone. right? You're there's something about that, you know, to be alone, but be to be together, you know, and be like, okay, like you just came from an awesome stop. You're reflecting on that. You're thinking about where you're going, but then the mind just kind of raises up. It just like looks around. It just tries to absorb and soak all this in. And so there's a real, you know, there's a contemplation that takes place among the rap of the Harley pipes. I'm just saying, like, it's loud, but it's just like there's a a bubble uh, of contemplation. It's exactly that can right. On a bike. Exactly right. You're living in the moment. You and surfers the same way. We when we go out and surf, especially if it's a little bit bigger, it says it out. We say that you're always alone in big surf. So it's a little bit bigger, and you're out there with a pack, but you're not talking. You're 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 in that moment. You're just living in that moment, and uh, and and that waiting on the next wave is kind of that that same contemplative experience. And then of course the roar of the the wave too. Uh, you know, think about you know, think about bikers. Is there, they uh, they watch out for each other too. You know, I I ride a motorcycle, <laughs> and I, I guess I'm a biker too. But if someone was in trouble and I had to pull over to help them, I wouldn't even know how to turn a wrench. You know, I, I I'm but most of the guys are someone in the pack. A few guys in the pack that if someone's in trouble, they can pull over and really help them too. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, you're looking always communicating with your hands. You know, there's just so there's all these kind of the nonverbals that you kind of like. You know, pass on word. You either pointing at something in a field. You know, you see like a big like herd of deer, or you know, you got roadkill on the road. You're trying to help guys out. Yeah, today, you, you point. Know, you point. Safe. You point down with your boot, 
or your hand. It's kind of like yep. running with the cavalry too. It's like you give these hand signals to go, you know, to, oh, to, yeah. to keep rolling. And uh, so there's these on. You got the wave to guys, guys going the opposite direction. You got the wave. You know, you throw down the hand just to. You know, it's all these kind of brotherhood aspects that are and awesome. People don't, people don't. And the other thing is when you're out riding, um, a good thing about Hawaii, you don't get the kind bugs, you know. But when you're out riding, um, you smell things that you don't. You might smell the rain coming uh, from a distance. You might smell a, a, the, mm -hmm. what's in the field or roadkill, you know. But it's like everything's alive, you know. You, you're, and I, I call it going out and getting oxygen. Yeah. Well, you feel the temperature changes. You go from the high altitude. Mm -hmm. you you know like whatever it might be you might drop into a cool canyon and then you're up the side of a mountain i mean uh five six years ago we went down to santa fe was our home base really we went up to yeah we um beautiful people trailered our bikes down to santa fe reset a little bit tighter schedule so we flew into santa fe motored up uh to durango pregosa springs mesa verde um and you're going from four thousand feet up to eleven thousand feet and uh, that's just a stunning experience. The side of a mountain, it's 40 degrees at the top, it's 90 degrees at the bottom. And the engine and, wants uh, to like run, said, the engine runs different too, right? It's like kind of sketchy that way too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, oxygen gets thin up there, so you got to have it all kind of, yep, all the carbs tweaked out. But it's, uh, it's all of that experience. Like you said, you feel it. You feel the humidity. You feel the temperature. You feel everything when you're on a bike. It just, uh, you're... You're in the elements, and uh, There's a sense that's of, just a whole different world. You know, my next, my next, the book I'm working on now is called "Where Have All the Cowboys Gone," and uh, com mm -hmm. comparing, uh, and, and then just going go to the whole cowboy code. There's a code among bikers too, and there's something about the horse and the motorcycle that are so much alike. You know, I, we even mm -hmm. referenced that in one of our episodes that with a man that had a horse ranch. But, but you know, the the, the uh, there, there's that similar that similar code of brotherhood, that similar code of ethics. So you know what? Um, I want to come out there someday. I know you guys have a men's men's event there. You know, we just did a. We, I just spoke for the Boise radio station, and nice. uh, they they have two they have two locations there. I think it's Twin Falls and Boise. Spoke at both those places, and I said, well, you know, why don't we just why don't we have a cigar night? You know, the night before the the uh, the this no. Uh, why don't uh, I said why don't we maybe there's a few guys that are nights on bikes that want to go for a motorcycle ride. Maybe we can, yeah. I can rent one. We'll ride. Seventy guys showed up. And we rode through the Payette, Payette <laughs> Canyon, I think. And I said, maybe we'd go for a little ride, <clears throat> maybe an hour or two, and then we could go have cigars. Seventy guys show up, <clears throat> and then the cigar bar that we went to, it just opened. It was sold out. So I want to come out there sometime <laughs> and, 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 and show up a day. Maybe do, if you ever have that, that, that men's event, if I'm ever invited, I'd like to come out and do, the, um, do a run with you. Hmm. Maybe Jeff hmm. Cavins would come up, too. And then have a cigar night. You got to have the cigars and whiskey. Oh yeah. And then, yeah. And then the yeah. next day, get all spiritual and have a men have have the men's event. But yeah, I'm going to I'm going to Colorado uh, in October. We're doing the same thing, having the cigar night and maybe a little motorcycle run. But yeah, there's something about that when wow. you you know when you when 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 the men break bread together or they have that whiskey and a and a, and a cigar. Mm -hmm. You have that whole yeah. hour of reflection. You know, when you have a cigar, you. You have that whole long time of reflection. And then lives are changed yeah. and you're friends forever. Absolutely. No, and I should bring this up too, Bear, aside from that, you know, that group for 10 years stroke. So about 20 years, we've been doing a, a diocesan motorcycle run. It's always the last Sunday of August. It rotates around the whole diocese. So a priest will host it. Wow. We'll have everyone gather at the church. We'll go ahead and give the history of the church. We'll have time of prayer. They'll go out and bless all of the bikes. And then we'll do about a hour and a half run and then we'll end up at a supper club where we take up a collection for some kind of cause. There you go. Well, how, and uh, yeah. How can people yeah, we've find, done that for How can people find you? Yeah. Yeah, um, boy, I just St. Mary's Cathedral, so I'm the rector of St. Mary's Cathedral in St. Cloud. They can find me right there on the website. That's probably the easiest way to connect with me. And we, we can put them in touch with other things. And we got to get to know we got to get to uh, meet you in person someday. We once had a bike blessing. There was, I was in Florida when I was filming down there and I asked the local priest, could we have a bike blessing? They'd never done it. Right. So in the spring, they have a bike mm -hmm. blessing. So about six bikes show up and this lady kind of comes by with her little bicycle with a little wicker basket where she goes to get her her little daily shopping done. I wonder what mm -hmm. she's doing here. I realized she had come for the bike blessing. <laughs> she didn't know it was motorcycles. <laughs> so just cute little lady, you know. But guess what? Those are the women the whole church runs on. The prayers of those women, that's what that's why 
They're, they're the ever ready, ever ready batteries of, of the Catholic Church. Their prayers. We're talk, been talking with Father Scott Pogacnik. The the time went too fast, Father. Thank you for joining us. A joy. Thanks so much, Bear. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite everybody to go to uh, deepadventure.com. The, join the Mama Bears there, or join. Uh, the, the Man Cave and Bear School of Manliness. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha! Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak DeepAdventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift.